and the world of spirit. What was Thomas Edison working on before he died? He already got the phonograph. He said when he actually got a voice to play back, they just kind of jumped back and were afraid. But he, he would get this inspiration and, and get these ideas. And, and before you know it, he's putting pictures on camera, on film. And then he said, my last final dream is to get in touch with the spirit world. I'm going to have a machine that will actually trap spirits. Lucifer Magazine of 1890. Lucifer Magazine says one of the leading minds of the day is beyond dispute that of Thomas A. Edison, whose inventive powers have dispelled forever the secrets of the darkness. Edison will stand out prominently as one of the most remarkable products of evolution through repeated incarnations and the present century has been blessed with. That the present century has been blessed with. According to our belief, these peerless gifts of his had their beginning in some former life. Edison never had more than two months of schooling, but he had training at home from a mother. Before he was ten years of age, he had read several standard works of history and literature. It is said Edison dreams during sleep of his inventions. You've got some good things. Number one, that the man never went to public school. That the man was homeschooled. That the man was able to sit back and read at 10 and 11 and 12. He didn't have the motion picture mess that he invented to, to mess up his schooling, see. But uh, nevertheless, there's something more going on here than just wit and intelligence. Napoleon Hill, who makes witchcraft popular, How to Win Friends and Influence Everybody, he wrote a book in 1971 says you can work your own miracles. That sounds like you're a god, doesn't it? Mr. Edison discovered that when he concentrated his thoughts upon an idea he wished to perfect, he could tune in and pick up from the great reservoir of boundless ether thoughts related to that idea which had been previously released by others who had thought along the same line. Mr. Edison believed that the energy with which we think is a projected portion of infinite intelligence. I mean, this is fruity stuff, crazy stuff. In 1878, Blavatsky, Blavatsky the witch, Blavatsky who is mentioned in the Harry Potter novels and whose theories and religion is sold to all of these children today in this day and age. Blavatsky wrote a letter in 1878 to Edison and said, I would have been glad to have given you a little glimpse of what lies beyond the threshold of physical science. I have no doubt but that you will do very well. You are one of the few scientific experimenters to whom we would care to have on our master role. Fraternally yours, Blavatsky. Madame Blavatsky hopes she will be able to dine with her on Thursday at 6 p.m. and will be pleased to explain to you something about the occult forces that you desire to know. To show you what Edison was working on before he died, in 1933, Modern Mechanics magazine says Edison's own secret spirit experiments. Here is described one of his amazing secret experiments whereby he sought to lure spirits beyond the grave and trap them with super sensitive instruments. In 1920, Edison gathered a small group of scientists in his laboratory to witness his secret attempts to lure spirits. When the experiment was ready to begin, the spiritualists in the group of witnesses were called upon to summon from eternity, the ethereal form of one or two of its inhabitants to walk across the beam. I've opened up a little bit of the door here for you can see that there's been some very, very dark satanic men involved in devil possession, involved in the occult, involved in the direct worship of Lucifer, Involved in trying to seek Lucifer. And and because they later supposedly became atheists or didn't believe the Bible, you think the devil cares? His whole point is for you not to fear God, so you'll go experiment with the occult. Now, I'd like to have you think about something for a moment. You got this video... You've got the computer and you think we're so blessed in our generation. In 
87% of university students polled have used webcams and such like for wickedness that's unmentionable from the pulpit. 87%. You like your technology? God said nothing will be restrained from them which they've imagined to do. So God tried to limit man getting satanic inspiration to go hurt himself more. You just have more ways to destroy your family than any other generation has ever had. By the end of 2004, there were 420 million pages of pornography on the Internet by less than 50 companies. 420 million pornography websites. That's 2004. In 2006, the Internet pornography with your computer, video, Thomas Edison meets Babbage. And we now have a 12 billion, I didn't say million, I said billion dollar annual revenue that's in 2006. The largest group of viewers of Internet filth is children between ages 12 and 17. The folks that will be marrying your daughters and your sons. God forbid. I hope it's not found in your home. I hope you've done everything you can that if you choose to try to use this technology for good, I do pray that you'll have enough sense and enough boldness and enough manliness to make absolutely sure that your own soul and your wife and your children are absolutely protected. In 2005, 71.9 million people in that one year had visited lewd sites, which they said was almost half of everybody that searched the Internet. In 2005, half of the people that searched the Internet visited lewd, wicked sites. Now, child pornography has become a three billion annual industry. Every second, 30,000 people are viewing filth on the Internet. Every second. Every second, another 30,000. Every second, another 30,000 people. God looked down and He said, sorcery, fornication. As in the days of Noah. He only found Noah and his family perfect. The whole rest of the world had defiled themselves. One in three of those 30,000 every second that are viewing Phil are women. And none of this even deals with the email. Email is the secret way for you to be a pervert. You didn't ask for it to come across your screen. And I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're able to look at that filth, then you're in great bondage. You understand that? If you don't have it set up where that stuff automatically is deleted, then I would get off of email. You understand that? Because I know what you are doing. You are sitting here in your life living a double life. You understand that? You are a hypocrite. You're a vexed hypocrite. But you don't want to get rid of your email because you think you can sin. And not have to feel guilty because you didn't ask for it. 
I wonder if God will buy the game. Y'all listening? Two point five billion emails every day are lewd. Beyond mentionable. Two point five every day. You know what the most popular day for it is? Sunday. Sunday. Sunday is the most popular pornographic day. The average age for the first first pornography on the Internet is age 11. I got one verse for you. Matthew 18, verse 6. Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in Me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. The Lord says the punishment that you're going to have at the judgment seat of Christ, take the most grueling physical death that can be imagined upon this earth and you're going to have worse. Say, Lord, what did I do? You allowed your children to have a stumbling block. You allowed your children to get addicted and cursed. And you did not believe the verse that says, a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You didn't believe it. You forgot in the Bible a child is under 20. You forgot in the Bible that God said He's not mocked. Evil communications will corrupt good manners. He said, I can trust my children. How big of a fool are you? I've got pretty good children. I hope you're getting ready to go to hell. Are you listening? I don't know if I can put the fear of God in you or not, but I hope God's Spirit will put the fear of God in you. And I hope you'll realize you've been warned. And what I'm telling you right now is you need to get the stinking computer away from your children. You need to get it away from you unless you are sure that you can control it. Dear Lord, I do pray in the name of Jesus Christ that folks will understand the wickedness that's in this world. We've tried to preach it in a seemly manner, Lord, while at the same time letting the truth be known. Lord, I know that fools will make a mock at sin. And they'll laugh about all of this and they'll think it's no big deal, Lord. But we know the whole world's racing to hell. They're killing little babies in the womb. What wickedness, Lord, is soon to come upon America. They're wondering why there's pedophiles everywhere, left and right. But nobody will stop and admit what we're doing to ourselves. The wicked movies that people watch, dear Lord vexing themselves daily. God, I pray there'll be some people here that'd be willing to pluck their eye out, cut their hand off, do whatever it takes, Lord, to obtain Thy kingdom. We know salvation is by grace through faith alone. We thank You, Lord, for eternal salvation that can never be lost. But we know there's a terrible judgment for Christians coming if we will not live right. And Lord, You said to make not provision for the flesh. You said to do whatever we can. And Lord, I know there's a lot of things we can get rid of before we have to get rid of our eyes, Lord. Help this church be motivated to get serious about these gadgets that allow pornography to come into their hearts and homes. Please, Lord, please move upon this church. 
to wake up. In the name of Jesus, amen.